so Dolby Vision is a format uh, for consumer TVs to try and ensure the creative intent uh, from the colorist and director from the grading suite to be delivered to the home. That's the intention of the, of the system. Now, there's a lot of terms in there that some people watching this video on YouTube might not be aware of, such as a grader. So maybe you could take it through stages of uh, when a film's made, what the process is, and, and how it ends up on the consumer's TV. Sure. So um, typically most films are shot with a digital camera. The digital camera has a, a, a very large dynamic range, which until HDR and Dolby Vision hasn't really been seen before. So for the first time now, people are using the the storytelling tools of what the camera's actually been capturing to its fullest extent. Uh, that's usually uh, done in two ways. The director of photography on set captures those pictures. He looks to get uh, uh, the creative look that he's trying to achieve in conjunction with the director. And once that's done, then that will be edited and then it will be finally uh, graded or, or made to look as the film should look. So whether that's dark, light or, or, or whatever the, the, the movie is, is going to be. Um, so we consider that um, HDR tools, uh, so uh, big dynamic range, detail in shadows, um, uh, bigger color volume, are all sto storytelling tools. There are no uh, no decisions on everything should be super bright or vivid. It's about telling the story to the best of the, the tool's capability. I guess one of the misconceptions with HDR, because there's lots of talk about peak brightness and nits and so on, you're not talking about an image so bright that it burns people's retinas. It's actually about uh, little tiny areas of the image, like a, a window with the sun coming in and so on, isn't it? Yeah, so it, it, it's really replicating real life, you know, in real life on a sunny day, the, repli uh, the, the kind of reflection off some chrome is way, way in excess of what any of the HDR devices can do. Really, you use the representation, the rendering that the, the, the monitor is doing to tell that story. So if you want a little bit of sparkle in the highlights, you can do that. If you want to have more detail and shadows, you can do that. With today's technology, or today's television in Rec 709, the colorist's job is basically to try and bracket an image into a very small space. Now in HDR, HDR you have this great capability to work uh, in the top and the bottom of the picture, and top and bottom of the picture at the same time, which is kind of the important bit, because now you can have a super dark shadows with a kind of shaft of light in a story because that's that's the creative intent you want. You mentioned digital cameras but obviously this this goes all the way back to the heyday of film does it not because film always had wide dynamic range so we've seen Blu-ray releases recently 4k Blu-ray releases of uh, The Wizard of Oz in Technicolor and uh, uh, what was the other one It's a Wonderful Life's just come out black mm -hmm. and white but in HDR um, so it's not just about modern film is it? No, again, if, if it, let's use the term neg uh, negative, so a digital negative typically has that range. A film negative, if it was very well shot, will have that dynamic range. The difference, obviously, now is that people, when they're doing those uh, rescans for 4K or whatever, then they are typically scanning with HDR in mind. So it wouldn't have been the same process that would have been used uh, uh, long ago. What it's interesting to see is that there is a big range that you can now use. You still have to keep typically in mind the creative intent that was there with the original film. You can't just make it sort of super vivid colours just because you have the technology. So it's about creator's intent, which is why we come on to Dolby Vision. Now Dolby Vision is different from HDR10, HDR10+, plus HLG, so what makes Dolby Vision different? So, so the aim of Dolby Vision is to, which is the difference between the other uh, formats, is to uh, grade once, so grade that HDR master in the big space with, with all of those uh, uh, storytelling tools, and then uh, to do what we call a Dolby Vision analysis to generate uh, the Dolby Vision metadata. And this is like a recipe for, your, uh, for the, what was seen in the colorist suite and, and how that is delivered out to the home television. So the aim of Dolby Vision is to really join the colorists and directors intent right the way through to how it's seen in the home, irrespective of the, the nit level of the television. Now let's come on to this question because it, it's a question that gets asked quite, uh, quite often. 
are we actually seeing what the director intended with a consumer level TV? So the aim of, uh, of, of what you're seeing behind us is a 4,000 nit uh, uh, consumer display, uh, consumer display, professional display. Uh, and um, you'll see later with some of the other demos, the consumer representation of that. So there aren't consumer devices at this uh, luminance level. And so we're using uh, the Dolby Vision metadata to map that in. Uh, you will see demos where it maintains the creative intent and this is a big attraction for people because if you're making a movie or a TV series you want to know that whoever sees it in whatever format has a good impression so the Dolby Vision version will give you a great Dolby Vision version on a TV at home it will equally look good in HDR 10 and it will look equally good in SDR and it will have what we refer to as the same DNA it's one grade mapped into wherever those uh, versions exist. All of them are creatively signed off, so there isn't anything where there's uh, a kind of automated process that does something without a creative sign off. So with um, with Dolby Vision, it's as a creator intended. Now, there's been a lot of talk in Hollywood about image smoothing, frame interpolation, uh, changing things uh, within the TVs. If a TV has Dolby Vision on board and people use the Dolby Vision mode, um, do you switch all that off? So in the Dolby Vision mode we control the renderer in the television so effectively it is replicating with the metadata as the colorist intended and so uh, all of the TVs have a Dolby Vision mode that is in that uh, that kind of standard things and that's how we certify uh, the television to be approved. It doesn't stop the manufacturer still adding in their own um, improvements in their in their view of of how things can look uh, and so again it's your decision as to how much you turn off uh, there is this movie maker mode coming again there would be no reason why you couldn't have Dolby Vision with a movie maker mode but that's that's all very new. So th there's at least one Dolby Vision I think it's Dolby Vision dark where it's as it's intended and then if it's Dolby Vision bright or vivid the manufacturer can add things in there is that right? Yes, so again, it's Dolby Vision Dark is the mode that we typically certify. On top of that, the, the TV set manufacturer can add in whatever they think is, is relevant to their, their device. It's still using the metadata, but it's adding their refinements on top. How do you get this message? I, I know you deliver this message to professionals. How do you get this message across to consumers about what Dolby Vision does and how it improves uh, their viewing material. So I think it's quite a hard message. Um, I guess I guess there are several things. Um, HDR is very prolific. Uh, I think one of the streaming services quoted something like 155 million subscribers on their service are watching it on an HDR capable device. So it's definitely not going away. Um, in, in services like Netflix, um, you basically on your EPG select a program, it has Dolby Vision uh, in, in the EPG to say it's a Dolby Vision program. If you select that on a Dolby Vision television, television, a little sign comes up to say you're watching it in Dolby Vision. After that, you have no idea. And, and so really, if you don't pay attention at the start, all you're seeing is a great version. Uh, and, and you go away happy. I think the intention of all of the uh, anybody with content is that people should see a great story whether it's in Dolby Vision, HDR or SDR and if it's consistent and has the DNA that looks the same people talk about the story and talk about the, the program it shouldn't be about the technology. There's quite a bit of noise in this room and it's because of one of the monitors that's in here. Maybe you want to tell our, our viewers about the, the Dolby Pulsar and what makes it so special. So the Dolby Pulsar uh, offers you 4,000 nits of luminance, uh, so it's very, very powerful uh, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of the possibilities that you can do. Uh, so the, the noise you're hearing here is actually the power uh, uh, variations between light and dark and that's what the monitor's kind of doing. It's, it's a tool that um, is, is fundamentally about exposure, so 4,000 nits compared to 1,000 nits is about two and a half stops more exposure. So more contrast into the picture uh, in terms of that as a master. And obviously on a screen like that, it, it takes more power, so Correct. consumers don't have to worry though, do they? Uh, their, their monitor's not gonna sound like that because 
this is used day in day out. It's a professional unit. Correct. This is professional. The consumer one is a consumer TV uh, with a peak. I guess the maximum peak at the moment is kind of around about a thousand nits. Um, it's all controlled. You're not watching a thousand nits permanently. You're using that to tell a story, and it's it's used subtly. So again, somebody grading at four thousand nits um, isn't going to go blind or or have a, a an eyesight problem as as some people originally think. And what would you say to consumers that are maybe sitting on the fence at the minute when it comes to upgrading to not only 4K but HDR TVs? It, is it worth the, them taking the step? So I think definitely the the H as, as I said, there are a number of services offering you HDR, so there's not a problem with content. Uh, there's a, a, a range of, uh, of TVs, devices, mobile phones, all out there supporting Dolby Vision. So there's no reason to think it's going away or that it's not, uh, not available. And many of the new streaming services, you know, the Netflix, iTunes Plus, Disney Plus, this is all supporting Dolby Vision content. So again, it's the right kind of place to, to look at this. Mm -hmm.